director of Pathways to Prosperity. I'm, a, I'm the regional director of Pathways to Prosperity. Uh, we've got uh, three people in the field. We have a St. Louis director, a mid-Missouri director, and a Kansas City director. And our state director is Miss um, Christy Davis, at, who's housed in the, at, uh, at Desi in Jefferson City. Wow, I've got a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, in your own words, what is Pathways to Prosperity? Okay, well, Pathways to Prosperity is a, it's a national initiative uh, that came about as a result of a report that came out in 2011. And uh, basically what it was asking, it was asking the question, uh, why isn't the United States doing a better job of preparing its young people for, uh, for the 21st century workplace? You know, and it, had, it provides a lot of data, uh, for example, uh, uh, part of their data indicates that uh, a large majority of our 18 to 25 year olds aren't aren't prepared well enough for the 21st century workplace. Uh, uh, just recently, a report came out that indicated that about 44 percent of those with baccalaureate degrees are underemployed. You know, they're not they don't need the degree for the jobs that they have. And so the question was: Is what is the United States doing, or what can we do differently to help ensure that all of our young people have the opportunities and the and the you know the opportunities for a successful post secondary transition into uh, high wage jobs that uh, you know can lead to meaningful careers. Hmm. That's a lot. Like, mm -hmm. I know a couple people here that don't have jobs and they're great at what they do. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. Uh, what is the goal that you're trying to accomplish with Pathways? Well, I think the goal is uh, what the goal is uh, looking at what we can do to help ensure that all of our kids, all of our students, are having successful post-secondary transitions. And uh, so, part of it is looking at asking the question: well, What can schools do? And uh, one of the things that we're finding out is that schools are doing a lot of good stuff. You know, and so, but the question is, what can we do uh, to maybe e even better so that we can help more kids? So it's really not adding on to anything else that schools are already doing. It's more or less asking the question, what can we do better to help ensure more kids are successful? And part of that is helping our students and our parents understand what the broad range of educational opportunities are after high school. There's no question that uh, we're going to need that, that students are going to need more than a high school diploma in order to earn mean, a meaningful career, to have a meaningful career and to earn meaningful wages. And, uh, and so what we have to take a look at is what does that mean beyond high school? And it doesn't mean necessarily a four-year college degree. In other words, there are lots of options for kids. Okay, There, uh, there's, uh, there are apprenticeships. There's two-year technical schools, there's community colleges, there's a the military, uh, and there are four-year colleges. But what we've done in this country is that uh, we've done a great job of saying that, you know, giving the impression that every student needs to go to a four-year college to be successful. And that's not the case. And what we have to take a look at is not deny great the four-year college, because that is important, but we need to just raise to the same level of respect all the other post-secondary options that are out there. Uh, uh, so that uh, you know, there are there's uh, some in, some data to indicate that about um, uh, about a third of all jobs that uh, well uh, about a third of our associate degree holders earn more than those who have a four year degree. You know, so so the the degree is not necessarily the automatic ticket to higher wages. It depends upon what you're getting that degree in. Uh, people can earn, get a welding certificate, a one-year welding certificate, and start out at fifty thousand dollars a year. You see, but we don't get that message across, and we know that education is more than just high wages and things like that. But that's you know, being able to earn a wage, you know, a living wage is important, and I think we need to understand that there are lots of good jobs out there that don't require you know thousands or hundreds of thousand dollars of a, of, a, of an education in order to receive. The other message that we have to get out is that uh, even if a student starts out in a one-year welding certificate, doesn't mean someday they could end up couldn't end up with a PhD. You know, so that we really are in and out of our educational system all through our lifespan. You know, so wherever you start out, uh, 
doesn't close any door, but we have to just make sure we have to understand what all those doors are. Okay, so that's part of it. And so, and, 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 you know, schools are doing a good job of, of looking at having higher standards for students because that's essential because if we're going to have students, all students, uh, aspire to a post-secondary experience, we got to make sure they're prepared for that. And schools are really focusing in on that. You know, how do we prepare our students academically for a post-secondary experience? And so those high standards are important. Uh, we don't want to lose sight of that, but we need to also put those in, in context. Why do I need these high skills? And so trying to understand what the uh, what the world of work is like out there uh, is a part of what we do with Pathways to Prosperity. Okay. The other part of it is recognizing that, uh, um, that schools can't do it alone. And so part of uh, a large part of Pathways to Prosperity is asking businesses to get involved with us. You know, because one of the things that uh, Pathways to Prosperity uh, strives to do is to create school business partnerships that would allow for students to have uh, meaningful work-based learning experiences while they're still in school. You know, so that student, you want to be an engineer, well, why, let's, why can't we get a, 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 um, uh, a, an engineering sort of internship for you, you know, while you're still in school, you know, so that you begin to think about, uh, uh, hey, is this really what I want to do? This experience right here in terms of uh, broadcasting, this is a great example of a work-based learning experience. But we need to make sure that all of our students have opportunities for these kinds of experiences while they're still in school so they can begin to see the relevance of what they're doing in school and as it relates to the 21st century uh, workplace. But the more that we get our businesses involved in that, getting more students involved in meaningful work-based learning experiences, tying that to high academics, they're going to be better prepared uh, to meet the challenges of the 21st century workplace. Uh, does is part of your goals, like, are you going to try and achieve yet more states involved instead of the current nine? Well, I think that, you know, that's, uh, 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 I'm sure that they will, you know, uh, what, the, what goes on at the national level is uh, a little bit above my pay grade. So, you know, I just sort of work on what's going on right here in mid-Missouri in our state, uh, in terms of, in terms of what, in terms of what they're doing. But, uh, the, the message is clear. And I think whether we, uh, call it Pathways to Prosperity or whatever. I think that, that every state uh, is really striving to meet the same kinds of goals because one of the things is that uh, Pathways to Prosperity is not talking about any kind of new program or anything like that. Everything that Pathways to Prosperity talk to, talks about has been talked about before. And uh, one of the challenges that we have is that a lot of the good initiatives that it's it's espousing a lot of the good uh, uh, programs and th that it talks about have been been done before. The problem is is that they've been externally funded. You know the the federal government supplies money and grants and things like that, and then when the grants run out, the program dries up. And so Pathways to Prosperity was saying, wait a minute, you know why are we giving up on some of this good stuff? And so Pathways to Prosperity tries to see what we can do to work it more at the local level, build it from the ground up so that it becomes more sustainable, more systemic within the system so it's not so externally funded anymore. And, uh, and what can we do uh, locally, regionally, and statewide to build a system, to, to build our educational system, partnering with our uh, business world uh, to, to create opportunities for, for students and for teachers uh, to, uh, to, to build a system of education that is meaningful, relevant, and helps our students make those uh, successful post-secondary experiences. Uh, yeah, that's a lot, especially when you're trying to do with all nine states that are currently with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if someone was to participate in this activity, how would they? I'm sorry, now? Uh, if someone was to participate in Pathways Prosperity, oh. how would they? Oh, they would just have, if, uh, if a district, uh, wanted to um, participate, they would just need to call uh, Christy Davis, okay, at the State Department, and uh, we'd come out and, uh, you know, whether they were in the St. Louis area or the mid-Missouri area, uh, St. Louis, Kansas City, they would, we would just um, get a hold of the proper person and uh, start the dialogue about how to get started. Yeah. I mean, they got a lot of big cities that are trying to help out with this. Yeah, well, St. Louis, uh, you know, St. Louis has uh, actually, uh, St. Louis has been doing it for a couple of years now. They were the first state, they were the first part of the state to really get involved with it. And so we've got 
companies like uh, Monsanto involved, IBM is involved, uh, and so uh, there are rather there are large companies that are involved with um, you know with with it and, and really believe in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, why is Pathways to Prosperity directly focused on high school students? Well, part of it is that I think that uh, it, uh, if, if you look at it from a, a, a broader perspective, it, 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 it does really take in the K-12 process. Okay. Um, now, when it talks about student internships and things like that, it begins to maybe focus in on high school. But uh, what we have to think about from a broader perspective is that uh, as we uh, let's take academics first okay is that is that if we want students to be successful academically we have to build those we have to begin to build those schools early on in elementary school uh, continue to build them in, in, in middle school and then you know in, in, and continue to build on high school okay and so the, the academic piece is K through 12, and really K through 14, because even after high school, you're still going to need to continue to learn and continue to train. Okay, and so and so that part of it is certainly K through 12. In terms of the career aspect of it, we have to think about that as well. Is that you know students don't uh, uh, just automatically say one day, I think I'm going to be an engineer. You know what what takes place for that to happen? You see, and so one of the things that we talk about is. Creating a really a, a K through 12 system of career development, so that students begin to gain those knowledge and skills early on about the 21st century workplace, so that when they uh, get to high school, they have some uh, some background knowledge to begin to make some wise decisions about what they want to do in high school. Just to give you an example, um, every student has to put together a four-year plan or a personal plan of study, right? Do you have a personal plan of study, four-year plan? Yes. Okay. Now, one of the things we look at is that, uh, is that being able to do that, okay, do it well, does not come automatically. Okay, think about this. You have, you've had Algebra 1, right? Yes. Was that the only math class you've ever had before then? No. No, you've had math since elementary school, I bet you know. Okay. Sometimes when we put together those personal plans of study, in some cases, what we do is in eighth grade, we put this piece of paper in front of an eighth grader and say, here, fill it out, you've got to make your personal plan of study. But what have we done to help them get ready for that, you see, in order to be thinking about, what do I want to do with my life? And so part of Pathways is helping kids make, uh, be able to be good decision makers about their educational and career plans. They have to have knowledge and skills to do that. And that can really start in elementary school as well. And we begin to think about, you know, we talked about work-based learning experiences. Well, I like to call it age-appropriate work-based learning experiences because they're work-based learning experiences you can have in elementary school. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of schools, elementary schools, will have things like. You know, you know, truck fares. You know, we'll bring in the bring in the pickup truck or the, the you know the ambulance and the fire truck and you know those kinds of things, and kids can uh, play in them. They kind of get a feel for the world of work around trucks. Or you might have a you know, a lot of schools have Halloween parties. Okay, well, rather than dressing up in creepy stuff, okay, maybe they'll dress up in uh, uh, in careers that they aspire to. You know, things like that. So there are things that you can do, and 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 you know, I, I think that you know, even in, in the classrooms, you have helpers. You know, maybe you have the eraser helper. You know, kid who erases the board. You know, or things like that. And so, so you begin to develop those kind of work-based learning experiences um, that are age appropriate all the way through. And then in middle in middle school, you might start in job shadowing. You know, and even continue that in high school. But if you can build it, if you can build it um, so that it is a systematic K through 12, age appropriate K through 12, you might then eventually end up with a internship your senior year, kind of like a capstone experience, you know, based upon, you know, based on what I've learned, this is where I want to go, and uh, I now, I'm now i now ready for uh, an internship to, to kind of test out my knowledge and making sure this is what I want to do before I move on into uh, the next stage after high school. Uh, currently, the, all the juniors are being ready to do a job show in Excellent. two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we basically had Mrs. Demet come up and Showed us our papers, mm -hmm. had questions set up, and are trying, and is trying to help us see what careers we're going to be best at by mm -hmm. taking our ACPs online. Right. Yeah, that's, and we have, and a lot of schools, and I, I think uh, Centralia has Missouri Connections, 
you know, which is a, it's an online educational career planning tool where you can do career assessments, you can put your personal plan of study on it, you can practice ACT on it, you can do those kinds of things. And again, helps in, if that's introduced at the, at the middle school level, you know, here you've got, uh, you know, five or six years, you can begin to continue to explore, um, you, you know, your career options. And, and one of the things as we talk about uh, career options is that uh, Pathways to Prosperity does not block any student in. You know, in other words, you, you may start out, uh, hey, I think I want to be an engineer, and then uh, maybe at the last minute you think, hey, wait a minute, I think I want to do something else. You know, or that eighth grader starts out wanting to be a professional basketball player. All right, well, then maybe, and then maybe in the ninth grade year wants to go into the health field, but then maybe by 10th or 11th grade, they're not maybe want to go into business, and that's okay. But what we do with the career paths and the career pathways is we provide a structure and a framework for students to learn about the world of work. Uh, one of the things, one of the, you know, there are jobs that exist today that did not exist even five or ten years ago. Okay? And there were jobs five, ten years ago that don't exist today. They're gone, you see. And so we really can't, it's really hard to think about specific occupation. What do you want to be when you grow up? When well, we don't even know what's going to be out there. But we can talk to students about broader career paths. We know there's always going to be a health pathway, okay, or a business pathway, or uh, a technology pathway. What specific occupations will be in those pathways, we don't know. But you can take your knowledge and skills that you have, and you can take it in any one of those, and they can and they can transfer to any of the other pathways. But if you have that framework, you can begin to move around in the world of work in a way that makes sense. Okay, yeah, I've tried out the technology area. I'm not crazy about that. Maybe I'll go into the health or the business. You see, so you have these paths that you can begin to explore within this framework without thinking about specific occupations. Yeah, there's a bunch of like career like that, like technology. I'm trying to get into technology. Right. Like I'm going to a job show at the Columbia Tribune, mm -hmm. and since they deal with a lot of computers and trying to do all that, yeah, way work that, especially with this class with mm -hmm. all of the cameras. Yeah. Cause there's so much stuff you can do with it. Well, yeah, you think of, think about that camera. You just think what they we've done with 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 technology. You have a little bit of Canon here. And just a few years ago, you had cameras like that, you know, or even a few years before that, you had the VCR machines, you know, and, and just have, just think about how technology has changed the way that we do reporting. Now you've got the GoPro cameras, you know, and you think about the way that technology changes the world. That uh, Can all that relate to, um, uh, to the news media and to communications? Absolutely. But the jobs may look different. And, that, and, that, and that's what we want to try to do is to, to broaden that scope of, of um, the world of work so that it's, uh, students can, can, can see a broader perspective. Yeah. People today, they believe that YouTube, with all the people who are on it famous, that mm -hmm. they think it's just a job, that that's the only thing they do. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that YouTube is a job career? That YouTube is a job. Yes. Like you well, I think work. I think what you have to look at is um, is is the way that you look at a career. Okay. Now the way the way that I look at it is that uh, we all have life roles that we play. Okay. Uh, as, as an adult, you'll be a you'll be a worker. Okay. But you'll also be a spouse, maybe a parent. Okay. You'll also still be a child to to your parents. So we you know we play all these different roles. Our work role is just one of the life roles that we play. Okay. Now, what that can look like, okay, it can vary. Okay. Uh, if a person can make money off YouTube, okay, if they can earn a living off YouTube, okay, then maybe that does become a way to earn money. Okay. Uh, but that's that that is. But a career is more than that. Your, our career are all the roles that we play. Now that, that, that job of earning money by doing YouTube, okay, that can impact all the other roles that they play. I can stay at home. You know, I can be with my kids maybe, you know, and things like that. As a, as a, if, if your role, if your worker role is a physician, okay, that takes you out all hours of the night, you know, all hours of the day, you know, you, your hours are different, okay, think about how that's going to impact you know, your other life roles. And so when we talk about career, we really talk about all the roles that we play and and how our uh, and how those roles interact in such a way 
to create a lifestyle for us. You see, and that's and that and so when we think career, we think much broader than than just job. The job is what helps earn us money. It helps maybe set the lifestyle that we want. But our career and brought in, in encompasses all all of what we do within our lifestyle. Uh, what was the inspiration for this organization? So, what was the what was the inspiration yes. for? I really think that the, the like I said the inspiration came from uh, from the report in two thousand eleven, which uh, again was really indicating uh, that uh, we have too many students that are uh, and young people that just aren't prepared well for the workforce, you know, and so uh, the, the idea was what can, how can we do it better? You know, and, and it's not that, uh, you know, we, we have, a, we have uh, uh, think about that, we have about 20% of our students, for example, you know, roughly, okay, that are very focused. They know exactly what they want to do. You probably have some friends, you know, who knew exactly what they want to do. They've been directed all their lives, you know, hey, I want to be an engineer all my life, or I've wanted to work in communications all my life. They know what they want to do, okay? But uh, and you know they'll be they'll be successful probably despite everything that we do. But we have a large number of students who aren't quite that focused, you know. And so what we need to do is how do we help all kids develop what I like to call a flexible focus, giving them the knowledge and skills to be good consumers about their own life career development, so they so that everybody has a chance to be successful uh, after they graduate. You know, and I think that's because any time we've lost a student because they've dropped out of school, uh, because they've paid, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars for a degree they didn't need, you know, or want. You know, sometimes we put a lot of pressure on students to go to college because, for example, that's the thing to do, you know. Whereas, and, and that's what I mean by it, we need to raise the level of respect for all post-secondary options so that that student who wants to uh, go into an apprenticeship can feel as good about that as a kid who's going to Harvard, or that kid who has the ability to go could to Harvard could say, you know, I think I want to go into an apprenticeship. You know, I, I you know, I, I, just, I want to be, I want to become a, a plumber. I want to become an electrician. You know, uh, I want to become a cameraman. You know, uh, we need to, we need to break down barriers so that all students uh, can look at all options equally as they begin to look at what's important to them, uh, what their life goals are, what their dreams are. And, uh, and try to give them the background and skills that they need to make those kinds of decisions that will help them lead, lead a successful life after they graduate. Uh, last question here. Sure. What good do you think this would bring to the communities or schools that are involved? What good would it bring to the community? Yes. Well, I think a, a couple of things. First of all, uh, the, the focus is on the students. You know, so hopefully you will have a, a stronger student body. You'll have you'll have more students who are uh, more aware of what their goals and options are. They'll have a higher level of knowledge and skills uh, to make good post secondary decisions, and they'll be more successful. You know, in those in their post secondary experiences, whatever they are. You know, so so I think uh, I think that's key. Is, is, is that can happen. But the other thing that can happen with Pro and to Pathways to Prosperity, and I think Centralia really does provide a great example of it, is uh, increasing uh, the school business partnerships, getting businesses involved. And Centralia has had a history of being able to do that. I'm just so impressed with the um, with the uh, business partnerships that have been developed and and developing those close ties so that uh, so that the community works together to support. Uh, their young people, so that they can have a successful post-secondary transition. And then, it, if the businesses work together, and I think especially in the rural communities, you know, there's a there's a real um, there's a real need and sometimes a desire to be able to uh, to to keep young people in in, in rural areas, you know. Uh, and but sometimes that's a challenge to do. And yet, the more that businesses can help promote the opportunities that are available in the rural communities. Then maybe we have a better chance of keeping the young people there. You know, um, uh, for just for example, um, uh, Onshore, which is a, up in Macon, is a company, and it's an IT company that uh, was founded for the was founded in Macon for the sole purpose of working on helping to create a uh, a system where young people could get educated in in IT and then come back and work for the community. You know, come work for the companies back in their hometown. You know, and they've got 
Uh, if uh, in the way that they do that, they have a pathway in IT so that students take uh, some courses and they take courses in computer programming. They'll do some internship at uh, they'll do an internship at onshore, okay, and uh, then uh, if they do well, okay, and if uh, and if they like the work that they do, then onshore will pay them to finish their college education and then guarantee them a job back in Macon. We say where they can earn a living wage, okay. And so it's building those kinds of relationships, you know, that uh, that happen. I know that uh, you, you know the community here, uh, I think, has an interest in doing that. And so and so building those partnerships uh, that uh, allow opportunities for young people to to stay in a, uh, to stay in a, a their their communities, raise their families, have a living wage. That's an, another thing that I think that uh, pathways to prosperity. One of the advantages I think of of belonging to the Pathways to Prosperity. Okay. Uh, you got any final thoughts on this interview? Or do you want to ask me? Like, do you have any general thoughts about what Pathways is about? Like, currently the high school does Panther Pathways, which is similar because they yeah. have business mm -hmm. come in. Mm -hmm. Do you think, is, is that a part of Pathways to Prosperity? Yeah, I think that, absolutely. I think that the one thing is that the Pathways, like I said, it's, it's an initiative, it's not a program. And most schools are doing something, you know, and so Pathways, really, how can we do it a little bit better? And whether you call it path, Panther Pathways, yeah. uh, some people call it Career Paths, maybe you might call it Career Clusters, uh, but uh, the idea is there, you know, uh, and I think that's what's important is that, that um, none of this starts from scratch. Okay, uh, that uh, we just take we take a look at what's going. One of the things that Pathways to Prosperity does, you know, let's take a look at what's going on in the schools. Okay, now what's going on in the community now, and are there things that we can make better? You know, and and that's what we ask. It's not saying okay, now here's something else you have to do in terms of what you're already having being asked to do. Let's take what you're being asked to do, okay, and how can we improve on it to help ensure success for all schools. So it's a matter of tweaking, fine-tuning, you know, if there are gaps, find out where those gaps are and maybe implement some things. But it's not having to implement a whole new program on top of whatever everything.